What's up, guys? Welcome back to more Sean Watches Reality TV for you guys. As somebody who's not the biggest fan of reality TV or anything of the sort. But today we got Crystal, who was second on the poll, I believe, that I just did. And uh, she's 34 years old, weight unknown, which most of our weights are unknown just because we can't find scales or we don't want to buy the giant talking one that Amberlynn Reed has. But uh, let's see what Crystal has going on in her life. Is that close to Columbus? I feel like Prison Stripes is kind of a bold choice. But is that a guy hiding behind her? Tucked in there, little spooning it up, huh, buddy? Also, man, I'm kind of jealous. Mine don't grow in that good. My name is Crystal Hall, and I am 34 years old. And I feel like I've destroyed my life by letting my weight get as out of control as it is now because I'm 600 pounds and I'm miserable. Somebody could probably dust that fan so you're not huffing skin particles all the time, but a bra with a little heart, prison stripes, little spoon behind you, a bold way to start off the episode. Bold crystal, I'd say. Every aspect of my life is affected by my size to where I have to have help to do a lot now. There he is. My husband Freeland is the one I rely on to help me get up and through my day. But I hate making him do that because I know it's hard for him. You're right behind you. You think he's behind just in case we trip? Because I feel like that's kind of a squish hazard. He definitely could get squashed or whatever, however you want to say it. But my body is in such bad shape now, and I have all these medical conditions making everything worse for me. You know, first it started with things like joint pain, and it's been hard to breathe when I do too much. But now I have all these other issues. You're gonna give me a shot. I am a diabetic now that takes insulin. I have high blood pressure. I have major stomach issues. Yeah, the issue is our stomach's too damn big. It gets in the way of everything, but she's unlucky already as far as this goes. I, I dodged a diabetic bullet. I don't know how, but also kind of cool that she has some anime drawings on the wall. Parts of my stomach have nerve damage from all the years basically of abuse and I swell on my legs and feet so there's some days I can't really walk very well so I'm the swelling's always like the worst part I don't think people really account for but it's painful man it feels like your legs have to pop like a water balloon also do you guys think that this guy shaves his head like that because I refuse to believe that it's naturally growing in all sideshow bob like that I'm stuck to where my body just can't handle much now. Okay. Gotta get ready and get in the shower. Uh, I'll be in behind you. Do you guys think that he should just shave like the four hairs that are hanging out up front? Because the rest of it's gone in the middle, buddy. Why are you holding on to those four? But I guess they are the precious four that are left. And it's horrible to have to ask your husband slowly over the past couple years to go from your husband, your partner, to now I've turned him into my caregiver instead of my husband. And I'm angry at myself for letting that happen. What? She's got a fat rated tub. I didn't have no big tub like that. I was getting stuck in the little narrow boys just about. I almost died that way once. That tub almost held me for ransom. But I can't even get to the bathroom without getting exhausted. So getting undressed and getting in the shower, it's pain nonstop. To bend, to move, 
I'm out of breath. My legs will start shaking. I don't shower as often as I should, and because of the pain. I shower once every three or four days, and that's horrible. Kind of average. I mean, it's gross. Don't get me wrong, but a lot of us blow off showers for a few days at a time. Just... I don't know how I ever lived like that, but it's just kind of part of being that big. You don't want to shower. Horrible for a person my size because we get skin breakdown, we can get rashes and stuff like that. I try to take care of myself in between the days, you know, kind of like sponge bathing or whatever, but it doesn't, it's not as good as a shower. Hey, babe. They don't even have to blur the bottom. It's kind of crazy to see the way everybody's body kind of breaks down fat differently. Because hers is like all stuck in this little meat curtain thing that Boogie was showing us in that one thing we watched. Yeah. Can you wash my legs? Yeah. Crystal has quite a few problems. I feel bad for her. I mean, I understand that she's hurting and I definitely have to do a lot to help her. So in a lot of ways, I do feel more like her caretaker than her husband. But I love her, so I do it. Why don't you have a beach towel? We all have beach towels. You can't use a regular towel when you're this big because it looks like a damn dishcloth. Like she can't even cover her belly button and her breast right here. Everything's showing if we didn't have to blur the bottom or if we had to. But no, get a bigger towel. Give yeah, me another towel. I don't know what I'd be able to do without Freeland. I just know things would be a lot worse if I didn't have him. But as much as I dread the whole process of the shower, my least favorite part of getting ready in the morning is when I have to do anything in front of the mirror. I don't want to see my reflection because I hate my body. We avoid the mirror like the plague. I did it too, but I'm kind of like a psychopath to a point where I always felt, is this a normal thing? Do you feel hotter when you get out of the shower? Like, I feel like it just makes you 10% sexier when you get out of the shower. Because there were days, even when I was 600 pounds, where I took a selfie of myself in the mirror and I was like, damn, I look good today. But I think I'm just a psychopath. Thank you. You're welcome. And I hate looking at myself in the mirror. It makes me just sick, but I have to because part of my routine is I have to shave because I have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it causes hair growth in random places on your body. And for me- Yeah, you guys explained that to me last time. I didn't know that that was like a side effect of that. I also didn't even know what that was. But I still, even if she has that, I'm jealous. I can't grow this. This grows in a little whirlwind thing because I played with it when I was like 16 years old. So now it's like permanently in a little swirl. I don't know. But that has to suck for her, I imagine. Me, that's on my face. That's honestly embarrassing. But that's what I do when I get out of the shower is dry off, go to the sink, shave my face. But I do not like my husband to see it. He's never watched me shave my face before. And he's never helped me shave my face, even when I've been very sick. Because it's already hard enough for me to do on my own without any concern of what he thinks. Because when I have to shave my face, I feel so disgusting. I feel like I'm not even a female. Even well, that's your problem. Think highly of yourself. Delusional confidence. That's what I always preach. But at the same time, she definitely probably would feel bad about that. I imagine any woman would. But it's kind of out of her control. And him shaving it for you, you're not hiding it, lady. He can see it. It's right there. He knows you friggin' shave it. Even though I know I'm a woman, so I just hate my body. And the biggest reason for that is all my fault. It's because I'm as big as I am and it's destroying my life. And living like this is constant misery. It's horrible. And I just wish I could do something to go back in time and change it. But I can't. My life is what it is now. Yeah, all of us want to be time traveler tubby, but it just don't work that way. You don't get to jump back. I'd love to have a redo for a lot of things, but do I sit here and regret the past or do I sit here and look to the future? I choose to look to the future. I think all of you should too. And the past is past, I guess. True. I was really young when I started to understand that food could make me happy. 
When I was a toddler, my weight was normal. It wasn't until I was around five that my weight... What are the diapers for? Is there a baby in this house? There ain't no shot that some regular loves are fitting anything we got going on down there. Game started Christmas Eve, right before I turned five years old. We went and stayed with some family for the holidays. Oh, no. And that's when one of them did me for the first time. After that, my life was never the same. Ew, that's so gross. The fact that there are people like that in the world, I can't even speak freely on YouTube about what I wish would be done to them because I did that one time. I got in trouble for bullying, but people like that, I wish nothing but endless suffering. They deserve the absolute worst that humanity has to offer them. But that was just the start of it because it lasted until I was 13. I didn't say anything to anybody for a long time. And so every time my mom sent us to their house, it happened to me again. And she sent us to their house a lot because my father wasn't around. So she worked all the time to take care of me and my sisters. And it got worse. I'm trying to think about how a little kid would feel in that circumstance. Like the amount of hopelessness, the amount of just fear and just not knowing what or knowing and not being able to do anything about that. Man, it's heartbreaking to even think about. That's so, that guy's so trash. I wish him the worst. Honestly, the worst in life. Of course, when my mom started dating someone after all that started, because he was physically abusive to me and my sisters. I have two sisters, and when my mom wasn't around, he would beat all of us. And then his brother would come over and do even worse to us. He would abuse me and my sisters. So I lived in constant terror then because I wasn't safe anywhere. So I just tried to escape, and food became that for me. Oh my god, this poor lady. She went through more in those few years of childhood than most of us do in a lifetime. No wonder she turns to food for all that kind of stuff, for like comfort and all that. Food made me happy, and when I needed that, I ate. So that's when I really started gaining. And by the time I turned seven, I weighed about 150 to 200 pounds. So I was putting on weight quickly and that didn't really change. By the time I was 10, I was already up to over 250. Damn, she's burning me even. Sometimes we see them not put it on that fast in their childhood. Sometimes they put it on way quicker. I think she's in the group putting it on quicker. But after what she just said she went through, I think we have to give her a pass on that. But I never really thought it was a big deal until I turned around 11 or 12 years old. Because I started getting bullied at school, you know, pretty heavily. So it was miserable. But eating is how I've escaped it all. So from 10 to 13, I put on another 100 pounds. Could you imagine how much all that damn Chinese food would have to cost, too? If they're eating like that on a daily, right? That's a lot of friggin' money. Somebody's got to be working overtime in this house. I got over 350 pounds by the time I was 13. But the abuse stopped around then. Because when I was 13 years old, I told mom about the abuse. And she couldn't handle it. She didn't really say anything to me to comfort me or anything like that. But she did do something because it all stopped after that. What do you mean she couldn't handle it? I think she would should have picked up on that way sooner. Like, I just feel like you would get a feeling, you would know, you would see a change in your child. I just feel like she could have picked up on that. Maybe I'm totally wrong here, but I think most moms would feel they would notice something. I was still mad at her then because she was the one who let all of that happen. And after that, we didn't really have a relationship for a long time, but at least she made sure it stopped. So things got a little better through high school. And over the next four years, I put on another 70 pounds and was around 420 pounds when I graduated. Isn't it kind of crazy, though, how much it, like, slowed down once all that stuff stopped? 
So I think I just have to believe that she was definitely comfort eating. And after that, it got a little bit better because four years, 70 pounds, that ain't that bad in 600 pounder land. So I was still gaining, but just not as much as before. After I graduated high school, I was 18 years old and I was afraid of men, you know, afraid of dating men. And to the point I thought I was gay. Can't blame you. And that led me to meeting a girlfriend at the age of 18. But she had... Wait, is she switch hitting or is there something about Freeland over here that I just don't know yet? I guess we gotta wait and see. Kids, so I had to start working to help out and pay for things. And that was a lot for me. And I ate my emotions, I ate my stress. Every time the kids would wanna eat, I would eat. And over the next few years, I got over 500 pounds. After college, I went and worked for our local crisis center. And then I went and worked for a company that helps with the developmentally disabled community. But I was. Okay, so she's trying to find some kind of work that makes her feel like some kind of satisfaction in life. I mean, she's just trying to help people after everything she's been through. Seems like a very, uh, very good cause, at least, if she's trying to help developmentally delayed people. Still gaining, and eventually, my weight really took a toll. And I was unable to really take care of my clients the way they deserved, so I left. I went and worked at a cab company because it was somewhere that didn't require me to be as active. And I did that for around four years. So for a while, I had a lot to focus on in my life. And if you guys were to get into her cab, all right? And she's to be leaning all the way back, right? Scrunching straight into your straight into your nuts if you're a guy, all right? Are you mad as hell? Because I feel like I had to lean so far back. Whoever sat behind me was in damn trouble. If it wasn't as much of like a constant thing for me. But slowly, my whole life changed. Starting with me and my girlfriend breaking up. We were together for 12 years from the time I was 18 till I was 30. But as time went on, I started to realize that I wasn't gay. Ultimately. Well, damn, that's a hell of a revelation. You know how I knew that I wasn't? Uh, <laughs> should I even tell this? This, I feel like this is how most guys figure it out. So I'm going to tell you guys, okay? You're watching a video, okay? And all of a sudden, guy butt pokes into the screen and things just start going like, meow, right? That's how men know that they're not. But if you start start to get a little bit more happy when you see that, I feel like you should know that you probably are, buddy. After many years of contemplation, I did leave. And I got a place with my sister Katie for a while. We lived together with her son Josh, but Katie started struggling with drugs. She kept trying to quit for her son, but she relapsed three different times while living with me. And that was stressful because all this stuff with my sister culminated in me having to take custody of Josh to protect. Okay, so you turn to food, she turned to other things to kind of mask all the pain from your childhood. It's just tragic to hear that they went through so much so early on, it leads to a very poorly adapted adult. him, So he still lives with me because I won custody of him. And fighting for Josh led me back to using food to cope. So I started gaining a lot again until I met Freeland. When I got with Freeland, it kind of slowed down a little bit at first, but I'm judging by that Chinese food, Freeland's not exactly holding the reins back very much, but I guess maybe he slowed you down a little. I met him a few years ago when I was 32 and still working for the cab company. And Freeland and I did not like each other at first. We were very, very standoffish with one another. He hated me, I hated him. But we just, you know, let bygones be bygones, work together, and somehow in the midst of that, we both fell in love. Go figure, man. You don't hear too many uh, stories about anger banging on my 600 pound life, but I guess we just got a little bit of hate lust going on here. That works for some people. I first met Crystal, I was driving for a cab company in Portsmouth. I might get a phone call out of the blue. Somebody telling me they're my new boss. And I just said, I'll take your word for it and hung up. And it was Crystal. 
I thought she was a horrible person at first. She thought the same about me, but... Wait, why? What did she do to you besides say, hey, I'm your new boss? Did you want the job or something? Is that the problem here? But after three or four months of working with her, we just kind of started talking and never really stopped. <laughs> so we got engaged shortly after that, then got married this past year. And it's been me, him, and Josh living here as a family. And I'm thankful. This escalated quickly, okay? It went from, I'm your boss, I hate you, to engagement, to marriage, to this kind of, like, blended family type deal. This is just, she does everything a million miles a minute, except, well, no, she eats at a million miles a minute, too. Well, except for shower, everything but shower. Thankful to have both of them in my life, because they're what drives me to keep going every day. They give me a reason to be okay but I'm not okay. I can't even take care of myself now or provide for my family because I had to stop working because I got too big. And Freeland is so great about working and providing and everything, but at the end of the day, he's exhausted. He works 50, 60, 70 hours a week just to get us by. I can't blame her. A lot of us get this kind of, oh, we're so worthless, we're so not good for anything feeling going on when you get this big it, it's kind of the norm actually Bye. but then i need him to do more to help me do things i should be doing on my own and i hate it and it's all because i can't give up food you know the cravings they don't go away so i'm always binge eating what cravings? We're not holding ourselves back from eating any one specific thing. We're kind of eating whatever we want, whenever we want. I didn't have any cravings because I never had to worry about not eating it. I just ate whatever, whenever. And because of that, my family's life revolves around food too. The one thing that he always has said is he doesn't care how big I get, he cares about my health. And he was okay with my weight when we got together because it wasn't affecting my health like it is now. Now it's a whole different story. And I hate- Well, he's kind of a nice supportive partner then, but at the same time, you can be way too supportive and just be, hey, I'd love you at any size all the way up to a thousand pounds, so. How I'm passing on, how I eat to Josh. And what I'm doing to myself is starting to affect his health. Because Josh will eat large amounts of food for somebody his age and size. He'll eat fast and not pay attention. And I know that's because that's how I do it. What he's doing... Either that or he's afraid he's not going to get his share if you're sitting there straight just going on your fourth plate. He might be hungry if he doesn't eat fast as a learned behavior and he learned it from me his mom and i can't live with myself if he ends up like me so i know that i have to change before that gets any worse before i get any worse because i hate what i'm doing to my family and i don't want to be like this anymore holy shit how many boxes of texas toast do you think that is that's got to be at least four, right? I don't think that many comes per box. That stuff is good, but also she's got enough spaghetti to probably feed a whole damn homeless shelter. So these serving sizes are out of friggin' control. Grandpa's been in his room for a while. I got to get him out here for dinner. You want me to go get him? No, nah, he can hear me. Grandpa! Dinner's done! I love my grandpa. Look at this guy come strolling in here, just mega Chad, straight swinging his arms. Grandpa's got it going on. I taught her very much. You know, she eats too much, and I ain't afraid to tell her, but she won't list any of them. If you're going to eat, you're going to eat any of you know. But I don't worry about them losing crystal, because if she don't lose weight, she might die. It'd be pretty hard to take, really, you know, being your granddaughter. I think my biggest fear in dying was uh, making people carry me in a casket. 
But also, this guy should be afraid. You get in the way of a 600-pounder and their Texas toast, your ass is going to be in trouble, buddy. I hate being as immobile as I am. I want to be able to do more. I want to be able to go more places and do more things. I want to be able to do more around this house. I want to be able to take care of my grandpa. I want to be able to take care of my son, my husband. You know, the way that they deserve to be taken care of. But that's never going to happen if I don't lose weight now. I think she's very, she's a good person for taking her daughter's son. But at the same time, like, she needs to, she can't be the caregiver that she wants to be at this size, right? That's the problem. Like, you could have all the good intentions in the world, but you just can't do what needs to be done as a mom at this size. I think I'm ready to confront my demons. I think I really am. Because I've never been more ready to change my life. And I have to change before something bad happens to me. And food costs me everything. You're kind of just begging for the worst to happen, but hoping for the best. I mean, she's already diabetic. She's already dealing with PCOS. I don't know what kind of health implications that has exactly, but it seems like she's kind of got an uphill battle here, but she could totally turn it around. I'm hoping that she does, just for Josh's sake, really. Because I'm not going to be able to give up food on my own. I've tried that and I've failed. It's too hard to do on my own without any help. I need weight loss surgery. I've been telling everyone what I'm doing and they've been real supportive. But my mom actually told me she wants to come see me off before I go. And Well, that's nice, but I think that's the question I get asked more than anything. Like, why can't you guys try to do it on your own? It's just like asking, I don't know, somebody to dive down to 100 feet when they can't reach the bottom of the pool at 10 feet or asking them to climb climb, uh, climb Mount Everest when they can't get to the top of like a jungle gym. It's just asking a lot. I was a little surprised to have her support like this. Thank you. Love you. I think she feels some guilt about my weight gain. because she knows I ate my feelings with everything that happened to me as a child. You know, she's taken some responsibility for that. But I think every time she sees me at the size I am, it's just a reminder of all of that for her. And losing- I definitely think she should have seen some kind of signs here, or at least I feel like you could have noticed that this guy was a creep you were dating, right? Am I tripping on that? I really feel like she should have picked up on some kind of warning signals here. In the way will help both of us in a way because of that. Hey Josh, why don't you go sit in Aunt Tabby's chair so I can sit down? Um, Please. Josh was already half off the second seat. You could have squeezed in there, but Stacy over here, Stacy's a couple sweet and sours from a size 60 herself. She's not exactly a tiny lady. Oh, I'm packed and ready to go. Hell said. Yeah. I'm nervous about you going all that way. <laughs> that is the creepiest looking doll I think I've ever seen in my life. That thing's just straight nightmare fuel. I would not want that anywhere in my house. I've been that far away. I know. I'm more nervous about meeting the doctor than the actual drive. I'm excited for you to meet the doctor. You got people behind you pushing you. You're going to make it. You should be nervous to meet Dr. Stud Muffin over here. Dr. Now is the friggin' man. I don't care what anybody says. You got to love that guy. He's trying to save every single infinity fat in the world at this point all right well let's go short and sweet i guess oh i love you i love you be safe i will i love you love you i'd be careful both of you standing in one spot in the room for it with like all that weight you could have a cave-in or something because this is what does this look like a trailer home to me or something like that right 
the floors not aren't exactly the most secure here. We could have took a dive right here, straight timber all the way down. Behave yourself. Me too. Thankfully, we're getting close to where we're stopping for the night. But I'm very ready to get there so I can rest because all of my joints are killing me and other parts of my body are in a lot of pain too. I've just been in this car too long because it's been over seven hours. Oh, thank God. I want to rest so bad. We just have to hit a couple drive throughs on the way. We can't possibly get out of this car soon enough. But first, I need a couple taco party packs or something. Everything's in there. Because all the stops to get food slowed us down a little. I think we've stopped around five times to get a meal, just because it's gotten harder and harder for me the longer I'm in a car like this. But I've. Holy shit, you didn't put that in the time management right there? I feel like we should have factored food stops into this whole road trip thing here, because you knew it was going to happen. I just didn't think it was going to happen five times in the first day. I've almost made it. I've pushed through. But we still have one more day to go. And I'm more sore than I can ever remember being. We're here. So I'm worried about that. But I just need to get some rest right now. And hopefully that'll help. Yeah, I bet. I know my hips hurt really bad. I've never. Really? I mean, I guess, yeah. I would think her knees and ankles would be the worst, but hips, maybe she can't lean back as far as she wants or something. I've never done a trip like this, so it's just a lot for my body. Not just because of my weight, but my height is an issue. You got it or you need help? I got it. That makes me constantly cramped in Freeland's car, and it's just starting to really wear on me. I have a t-shirt that says FUPA, a good cat is just a lift away. I just think that's kind of funny because her, her FUPA was kind of pushing off the bottom of the floor right there of the car as she was getting up. But uh, I am the FUPA king. Don't judge me. I guess I'll take FUPA Prince on second thought. Maybe FUPA Jester at this point. People can just keep outranking me left and right. And I just want it to be as low as possible. So I haven't eaten much for the past few hours. Hopefully, that'll make a difference. But I'm starving, and that's making me feel a little lightheaded, which isn't helping with my nerves. I haven't eaten a couple hours. Boy, I'm lightheaded as hell. But uh, I don't think it works that fast. I don't think all the food you've ate has quite gotten out of your system that fast. But... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe she pounded some x lax or something the night before. Nerves. This is just an intimidating process, and I'm nervous about meeting Dr. Now and seeing where my weight's at. Hopefully, it's not too high, and this all goes well. And Dr. Now says he can help me. Dr. Now can help every fat person on Earth. Don't you question him? Don't you second guess him. Dr. Now's got it on lock. All right, lady. I've known I'm over 600, but I'm just not sure how far over I am now. And my big worry is that I could see something that surprises me on the scale. I'm going to guess here. I'm not good at this. So you have to give me, I'm going to guess like 639. I think she's bigger than 600. I don't think she's quite pushing 700 yet. And that would really be discouraging if that happens. Okay, little more than 20 pounds less than I thought. I am sorry, Crystal. I know that I should never overguesstimate for us. That's kind of uh, just shooting ourselves in the foot. But 618, she's not as bad as I thought she was. Now we're going to room five. Okay. That's about what I expected. So I'm glad I haven't gained a lot more. But I'm still not happy about that number. It's just not a number that's supposed to be associated with a human. Yeah, I think that's kind of what like farmers are looking for when they go to livestock auctions. They're like, this bull weighs 618 pounds of straight stud muffin. But 
Yeah, I don't think people should see that number. Sadly, I saw just a little south of that at 6.05 when I started. It hurts. It hurts the soul quite, quite a bit. And it's embarrassing that my family sees that and knows that's me. You know, that's how big I am. Because people don't get to this weight. But I'm... No, but that's... Uh... That's about four adult kangaroos. It feels a, it hurts a little less when you break it down into like kangaroos. I feel like that's how Australians do it, so that's how I'm going to start doing it. Or we could break it down to koalas, because then I'm going to guess it's like 30 koalas. Where y'all coming from? Uh, Ohio. Ohio. Where in Ohio? Frankfurt. All right. I'll take you from Ohio to come down to Houston. Uh, it took us two and a half days. Two and a half days? Yes. Half of those days were fast food stops, okay? We were stopping every hour or two because you were stressed out. I think she said five times the first day or something like that. So, Dr. Now, you need to know half of that was just fast food time. Wow. That's quite a trip. So, what brought you down to Houston? Hopefully, you can help me change my life. And how are you going to change your life? Lose weight. So... Get the bypass surgery. I think I'm just a little bit too much of a smart ass because if Dr. Now asked me that, I'm going to say like Bucky's and Whataburger brought me here. But I don't think he would think that's that funny. I just think that's my sense of humor. Okay. So you're 34 and 618 pounds? Yes. All right. So what seems to be challenges with your eating habit? I'm a binge eater. Binge eater all day? It, it's an everyday thing. So... Were you able to motivate yourself and change that? Yes. You think you can do that? I believe I can. It's time for me to take care of me instead of everyone else. It's time for... Okay, so her head's in the right place off the bat, it seems like, if we knock out all the stuff on the way down, because everybody knows the diet doesn't start until you hit Houston. Not on this show, at least. A couple people start it beforehand, but the rest of us know that it doesn't start until we get there, okay? For me to focus on me instead of... The rest of my family, you know, focus on me and my little my little family here and instead of taking care of everyone else, it's time for me. All right, so on a typical day, just walk me through what you eat and uh, what you do all day. So when you wake up in the morning, what time you wake up? I will usually wake up about 11, 11.30. Damn, you're sleeping in that late when you have a kid? I don't think... I think a lot of moms would be kind of envious of you with that kind of sleep schedule, but that's kind of wild. Well, I'm at 11.30. Okay. A.M. Okay. Take my medicine, drink a couple cans of pop, diet pop. Diet pop? Yes. In the morning? In the morning. Okay. Then I'll find us something for lunch. You fix something or you order something? or you... Depends on the day. We've Here lately, we've been fixing more of our food at home. So if you fix, what do you fix? Ramen noodles, cheeseburgers. Damn, that ramen, man. People, I don't know. I was never the biggest fan of Top Ramen, but I would eat like two packs at a time. Judging by her spaghetti servings earlier, I think she's crushing a little more than two packs after her about four Diet Cokes or something like that. Sandwiches, like lunch meat sandwiches, chips. Okay. Stuff along that line. Okay. And that's breakfast. Yeah. And then after that, what do you do? Sometimes I'll take a nap or go sit in the front room and watch a movie. You just woke up, you take a nap? Yeah. This lady's sleep schedule is off the charts, man. Uh, I would have said I play like Just Dance or something on the Wii, but again, I'm just a smart ass, so I have to get a little jab in there or a little joke at something. Okay. And what time do you go to bed? I'm usually in bed by 7, 7.30. So you sleep from 7.30 till 11 o'clock next day? Mm-hmm. You know how many hours is that? Way too many. You know, the fact that you sleep from 7 o'clock at night till 11 o'clock next day is very abnormal. Okay. What, this lady sleeps 16 hours at a time? How do you manage that? I feel like that's got to be some form of depression or something, right? No normal person can sleep like that. Mm -hmm. So you should get eight hours of sleep. Okay. Okay. And that's not healthy, but depression may be a factor in that too. If you're sleeping that much, and we need to address that. 
I'm in therapy for my binge eating and I see a psychiatrist for my mental health. So I've been working with them for a while and it's helped me get quite a bit of it under control. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're doing Really? You think it's under control at this point? We're 618 pounds. We're probably still sleeping 18 hours based on that. So what exactly is under control for us? That, and I'm sure it has been a help to you. But regarding your issues with your eating habit, it doesn't appear that you have anything under control with that. So I'm guessing it has been more of help with other issues. Because with your medical history I'm seeing in your file, you had a lot of anxiety and depression in the past? Yes, I still struggle with anxiety and depression. But I can't really blame her, though, based on her childhood, everything she went through. I think it's a miracle that she's even made it this far with all that stuff, because most people would have punched their ticket a long time ago, sadly. But it's, it's more under control now than it's ever been. Okay, but I want you to see a psychotherapist before you go back. Is that something you can do? We can't stay here longer. We need to go back. So can I do it with someone in Ohio? I want you to do it with someone here, but we'll set up a video call for you. How does that sound? Okay. So okay, so at least Dr. Now is already kind of bending his rules somewhat for her. I feel like he's a really strict guy, but for certain people in like the most recent episodes I've seen, he's kind of been a little more willing to give a little bit of leeway here and there. I don't know what's going on there. It just seems like the later seasons, he's a little more lenient for sure. So we'll set that up and let you know when that will be. So no matter what they do, do you understand this is all up to you? Right. So we stay very focused with your eating habit. And if you do that and stick to the diet, you should easily be able to lose 40 pounds on the next one. Okay. And it's going to be very easy if you eat three times a day. You can even lose twice as much as that. Okay. But Crystal... 40 pounds in a month, I feel like that's kind of his go-to number. 30, 40, something like that per month. Doable. Is it tough? Yes, very tough. But at our size, it's kind of easier than you would think if she was actually counting calories. If she's doing keto, it melts off you with keto. I couldn't recommend that diet enough for anybody. What is motivating you to get healthy and change your life right now? I want to live a better life. I want to go back to school and become a nurse. I want to take my son hiking. I want to do more with him. I want to be able to see him graduate and just be there for him. Okay. Really? Nurse? I, w I wasn't getting that kind of feeling from her that she wanted to be a nurse. But uh, wanting to go hiking? She's more outdoorsy than I guess I realized. Hiking's not really on our list of things we want to do, I don't think, at this size. All that is good motivation, so use that to decide if food is worth more to you than those things. Because if you don't change, none of that will happen. It's all up to me now. You got it. All right, so we're going to see if we can get you on the right track. This is the um, uh, stuff that you're going to read every day. Okay. And got the list of the that's your fat Bible. You will drop to your knees every night and pray to our Lord, Dr. Now, while you are reading this. And if you have to, uh, Freeland can spank you a couple times or something to get it right, right in your head. I don't know what you guys do. Food to avoid on the last page. This will give you some information about the obesity and risk factor, understanding of metabolism, and healthy eating habit. So you read this every night. Okay. Do you a couple Hail Marys without the hostess, but uh, yeah, Dr. Now and his read this every night thing, I feel like he's just trying to beat that into our heads, like, this is what you need to do, this is what you have to follow, like, religiously, and it's harder to get started than you'd think. You see how she eats already, so it's just a huge adjustment for her to have to change everything to this new lifestyle that she's not used to and not accustomed to at all. We've been back in Ohio for a few days, and my focus is on doing what I need to get approved this next month. And I'm not just changing my eating habits. I'm also doing all the exercises Dr. Now gave me to do. Good. Josh, do you want croutons in your salad tonight? Oh, uh, sure. Especially walking an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. And it's been hard to be active for as long as that. 
So if she's walking that much morning and afternoon, she's kind of blowing the rest of us away as far as like physical activity goes. It's it's hard, man. But that's a lot of walking for somebody still her size. But I've been able to do it. And I've been proud of myself for being able to do that. That's been an adjustment for all of us. But we're all committed to trying to make this work so I can do this. I'm starting to think Freeland heard me making fun of like his four hairs because he's had a hat on ever since I said that at the start. Josh, you want to come eat? Sure. Come on. You can sit by your dad. So I need to talk to you guys about moving to Houston. What do you mean moving to Houston? I don't think either one of those them signed up for that. Also, I guess since he's a taxi cab driver, he could work just about anywhere, right? It would be super easy for him to find another job doing the same thing in Houston. Moving to Houston for the surgery, for to see the doctor, to be able to maintain a relationship with the doctor and be closer to him, to be under his care. For how long? A year, maybe more, maybe less. Just depends. Hmm. I think so many more of us would be willing to like get into Dr. Now's program if we didn't have to move. Like I understand why it's beneficial. There's bariatric surgeons everywhere. I just don't think any of them have a camera crew are willing to like kind of jump through all these hoops to get you approved faster and get you through all those uh, authorizations and stuff that you have to deal with. So I think his is easier but tougher in different ways with you having to move and all of that. I'd like for you to go with me. I definitely want Josh to go with me. But... I just damn somebody stares you down like that. You know that they don't like anything that you are saying to them right then. I know that I definitely need to make the move because I, it's what's going to be best for me in the long run. I know, but you need to do it. You really want me to? You need this surgery. Right now, our lives are here in Ohio. So I can't see how we'd be able to move to Houston. But I know we just have to figure it out and do whatever it takes. So that's what I'm going to do. We know There's still Texas toast on the damn table. Like, are we ever going to get away from that? Because that is definitely not on the damn diet plan. And this guy's trying to be supportive. I'm joking around about him not liking what she's saying. But I think he's trying harder than I'm giving him credit for to be like a supportive partner in this situation, which I imagine is kind of hard for anybody. But you kind of signed up for it, buddy, when you started dating over 500 pounds. The reason I'm calling you, I had some concern about Crystal. Okay. My concern is that Crystal is sleeping 15 to 16 hours a day, and I'm concerned about her emotional state and whether she's severely depressed. Actually, I think I read somewhere that you burn calories in your sleep, right? Could she just be trying to do some kind of crazy calorie burning thing where she just sleeps off the fat? Could that be the situation we're in? Okay. And if she is, then I'm concerned about how that will affect her ability to do the program. So after having a session uh, with her, what are your thoughts about that? I think there's a lot of work to be done with her. She's got a lot of emotional issues behind her pathological eating. I okay. I'm concerned about Crystal's depression, but I don't think she's going to have any issue following your diet and weight loss goals, especially if that's what she wants to do. Well, that's good. But I feel like if your mind's not right, you can't get your body right. And that's what a lot of people kind of neglect. Uh, I don't want to say it'll sabotage her weight loss, but if she's still sitting here, just dwelling on all these horrible, horrible things that happened to her in the past. 
I don't know how exactly she's going to get past that and move on to be like a healthier version of herself. Well, good. Um, she definitely has some issues that are behind her overeating that we need to work on. All right. Okay. And we need to, to break that cycle where she's sleeping 15 to 16 hours a day to get her motivated to be more active and get her moving on in her life. All right. We're good. But I... You think? Sleeping 600-pound beauty just ate the apple, and now she's just knocked out. She needs Prince Freeland or... Maybe the Prince and the Frog. I don't know. I'm not good with all my Disney movies. Something like that happened, right? They kissed, woke up. I don't know. Prince Charming. I think something like that happened with the apple. I don't have major concerns about issues around self-harm or whether she'll be able to do this or not. But if she does get weight loss surgery, I do think with Crystal's history, it will be very important to keep track of her weight loss. Ideally, at least monthly, uh, to make sure that she doesn't fall behind even, even for a month. I don't want her to go back to using food as a coping mechanism. Given her so, uh, I, I'm guilty of this one, too. But a lot of people kind of screw up one day and they just decide, like, F it, since I messed up yesterday, I'm just going to burn the whole house to the ground. And they go, like, weeks and weeks and weeks of just messing up after messing up. So it kind of you can kind of slip and then just decide to just burn it all to the ground. It, it's not the right thing to do, but it happens history she's more at risk for a big slip rather than a small one so that, that's why we need to keep extra close track of her so it, it would be ideal for her to be down here in houston so that we can track her closely so that she could be most successful that's kind of what i was thinking along those lines she'll slip up and she'll just let it slide all the way down because she's just kind of i don't know it seems like she's just got so much nastiness in her past that I don't think I would be able to get over if something like that happened to me. So I don't know how she's hanging on at all. But aside from that, I, I really don't have any major concerns. And I'm, I'm sure she can do this if she wants. The real question is, how serious is she about changing her life? Okay, that's great. I appreciate that. So we're going to start working with her and see what's going on. And I'm going to make sure that she's going to continue coming to see you so she can yeah. work out on all the issues that drive in a tree. And I think she could be successful with Josh and with everything going on that she just has to live for. If she focused on that more than she focused on the terrible past, she she could move forward. But it's going to be tough. I, I Again, I don't think I'm man enough to get over something like that happening to me. Right now I'm headed to a local clinic here in Chillicothe. I was supposed to be going to Houston, but I called Dr. Now and told him I just couldn't do that drive again and asked if there was any other way I could do a checkup for him. You see how she parked? Anybody on our passenger side is in trouble because we pull so far over so we could swing the driver's side door all the way out and not hit the car next to us. I used to do that all the time. I know people that parked on the passenger side of my car was pissed. Without driving there. I feel like I've lost a lot of weight, and that would hopefully mean it would be a little easier for me to drive this time. But I still couldn't put myself through that again. It's such a long time to be in the car, and it takes such a toll on my body. But thankfully, Dr. Now told me I could go to a local clinic and get a weight check here. Told you, Dr. Now's more lenient in the later episodes. Early on, he wouldn't have let that shit fly at all. He would have told you to get down here or your ass is grass because he was not playing around early seasons. And he said if I hit my goal, the next step would be to move down to Houston if I want to get surgery. But I still don't see how we're going to do that. But all that matters right now is if I got to my goal and if I'm able to get approved for the surgery. I'm at a local clinic in Ohio to find out if I hit my weight loss goal or not. And I'm really hoping I've lost enough to hit my goal and get approved for surgery. Does she look like she's lost weight to you? Because to me, she looks like she's lost some weight. Or it could be the fact that she's wearing all black and she's kind of figured out the fat hack of just wearing like black so you look smaller. Which I was just recently able to buy some like colored t-shirts. She'll get there too eventually if she loses the weight. A month ago, I was at 618 pounds. And Dr. Now told me to lose at least 40 pounds this month. So my goal for today is to be at or under 578 pounds.
$25.91. Okay, 27 pounds ain't bad. Now, it ain't the 40 Dr. Now wanted, but I don't think he'll be mad about that. That's progress, but probably not enough for Dr. Now. But I thought it'd be lower than this because I worked so hard to lose this past month. It probably would be if it wasn't for all the Texas toast you were still punishing on. Because I saw it on the table, lady. Don't let me think for a second that you ain't eating that damn Texas toast. So, what are you at today? I'm at 591. So, you lost 27 pounds? Damn, under her nails are dirty as hell. Don't you guys clean under those things a little better? Because even at 600 pounds, you can get under your damn nails, right? Yes. Well, that means you're still eating about four to 5,000 calories a day. So why is that? I, I don't know. I thought I was doing better because I thought I was doing everything you asked me for. You may think that, but you're still overeating. How so many of you don't buy the excuse that we think we're doing better than that. But if you've never successfully dieted, never ate properly in your damn life, right? You really think that what you're doing is good enough. And it's not because the whole like portion sizes being all messed up and all that it just has not sunk into your head yet. What are your portion sizes? I thought they were good, but I guess they need to be smaller. That's exactly right. You need to cut back more than you are right now. So you think you can do that? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, I'll do it. Okay, go over to paper again and follow them on paper, okay? And if you have any questions, call me. But right now, you're not showing me that you're ready for weight loss surgery, okay? She's showing a good bit of effort here, more than I think a lot of people do. But if she wants to do this for Josh, like, she's gonna, gonna have to definitely step it up a couple extra notches. Because right now, she's just not doing nearly enough that she could do. But it's hard, man. It's hard at first. I know. Okay, so this time, I'm going to give you two months to hit the goal of 80 pounds, okay? Okay. That will give you more time before you have to come back to Houston like you want. But you need to show me that you can fix your eating habits to at least lose that much. Two months... 80 pounds like I feel like her asking for more time kind of shot her in the foot because one month 40 seems a lot easier than two months 80 I mean same thing but it's going to be harder to maintain for that length of time especially after she's only one month in but she is losing weight which is good you can do that yes I can do that and I will doctor now okay then if you do that and remember you need to move down to Houston have you figured out the options for that yet? We're working on it. Okay. All right, then we'll set your appointment for two months from now. And you need to hit that goal by then. And if you need anything, you may call. I will. Thank you, Doctor Now. It seems like she believes in herself more than a lot of people. I don't know. I didn't believe in myself a lick at the start. But I kind of got into the flow of it later on. I wish I could have back the first months after surgery, even though I lost, like, it was close to 90 pounds in the first three months. I just think I could have done better. Like, I think I could have monitored stuff better. I think I could be at my goal at this point if I didn't kind of mess around at the start. This past month, I focused a lot on my portion sizes to do better. I'm definitely sticking to protein and avoiding carbs still. Just trying to eat less of it. Can we get Josh? That seems good, but that's it's a hard diet to adjust to, but once you're used to it, I think it's the best diet by far. Time to come eat. So I started measuring things and learning what the proper amounts look like. And that's been a bit eye-opening, I guess. You know, following the amount Dr. Now has in his diet seems really... That isn't turkey bacon, lady. That isn't even good bacon. That looks like that shit you buy in microwave. Like, it's a big bag of it. It's just like, ah, uh, that shit's gross, man. But turkey bacon would be more filling in this situation than that paper-thin microwave bacon. Really small. 
but he said that's all you need, so I'm trying to stick to that. Here. That's all I can have now is 400 calories. Yeah. Per meal. It's gonna take a while to get used to it. Even though it feels like it's not enough at times, but I will say that after a couple weeks of eating less, I do think I'm starting to feel full faster. Your body is pretty amazing. It adjusts kind of quick. But at the same time, that's the saddest looking face I've ever seen eating bacon. Usually eating bacon is a joyous occasion for most people. So that's kind of interesting to me. Have you done your exercises for your day yet? No, but I'm going to go for the walk with Josh. That's going to be my morning exercise. And then I'm going to do my nighttime routine. All right. I appreciate that you guys are eating the same stuff, but I don't expect you to eat the same amount as me. They could get by with the same amount, too. Freeland over here is not exactly skinny or anything. Are you done already? Yeah. I'll go check your schoolwork stuff. Let me know what it says. I'm going to go put the stuff over there. So my life is all about the program and doing all the things I need. And I'm just hoping it pays off a lot better this time. What's with all the sun-kissed and Sprite lying around and stuff like that that'll, that'll just tempt you? She's drinking Diet Coke, which I drank some Diet Pepsi and stuff when I started to. But I learned later on it's kind of bad for you because like the carbonation will stretch out your stomach more. You're trying to shrink it, especially after surgery. Stay away from carbonation at all costs. I'm at Dr. Now's to hopefully find out I've made it to my goal and if I'm getting approved for weight loss surgery. But that all depends on my weigh-in. At my last weight check two months ago, I was down to 591. And Dr. Now told me to lose 80 pounds over two months. I think she's pretty damn close, actually. Because I don't know, I'm still fat blind, like I've said before, but she looks smaller to me, at least. And I'm trying to gauge by how she looks standing in that corner because that's I'm trying to see where her elbows are like relative to the corner where she was standing last time because she's I, I feel like that's how I'm gauging it right now so that means I need to be at 511 today 527 that's not too damn shabby I think doctor now will like that I don't know how to feel about that. Happy. Or what to think. That's a lot of weight to lose, but I'm still not to the goal. So I don't know what that means and what doctor... It means you're working hard. You should probably just take the small victories instead of slapping yourself and being like, hey, I messed up. You did pretty damn good. 32 pounds a month is not bad by any means. Now is going to say about it. And I'm really nervous to find out. It was a little easier, I think, this time because of all the weight I've lost, but it was still a hard trip. Well, being in the road for that long is hard for anyone, but I'm glad it was a little bit easier. And I think you're probably right about your weight loss helping with that because overall now you lost 91 pounds. So that's good. Do you feel a big difference in your day-to-day -day with that? Yeah, I'm able to get around easier and I can walk for longer before I get tired. So I'm definitely... 100 pounds off your hip is definitely going to make that damn road trip a little easier. I'm noticing a difference in what I can do and all that. That's good. I'm glad to see all your progress. You didn't make it to an 80 pound goal, but you're losing more per month this time. And in total, you're getting close to losing 100 pounds. So you've been sticking with it for a few months. So I'm going to go ahead and approve you for weight loss surgery. That sound good? That's amazing. Okay. I like seeing how happy they got. I don't know if I exactly jump for joy when they approve me because it happened so many times because I burnt that shit to the ground time and time again. I ruined it, messed it up. Man, I would have been a great freaking episode on this show. So before we do that, you need to move down here to Houston. Are you ready to do that? Yes. My husband is staying behind to continue to pay for our home back in Ohio. And me and my son are moving down here. And my mother is paying for us to stay down here in Houston. Damn, what a nice mom. That can't be cheap at all. 
Maybe she's right when she said her mom feels guilty for all the stuff that happened to her, because that seems like a pretty nice thing to do. So that I can get the surgery. Okay, that will work. So let me know as soon as you move down here, okay? Okay. How long until you can do that? Um, we think we can do it in the next month or two at the most. Okay, that's good. Let me know when you're down here, and depending on how long it takes, once you move, then we'll set another appointment to make sure that you're staying on track. And if you have, then we'll set you for surgery. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you, Doctor Now. And you I'm happy for her, man. But moving to Houston and everything, leaving her husband behind, I think that's a hell of an adjustment because her husband kind of does a lot for her, helps her with a lot, lets her sleep 16 hours a day while he does the rest of the other stuff, working overtime, this and that, while they have a kid. I don't know how that kid's going to adjust with just her down there. Because I feel bad for the kid, because if she's going to want to sleep all damn day, what's he exactly going to be doing? Oh, man. Not the damn Rona shutting everything down. I feel pretty strongly about this one, too. Just because it effed me over whenever quarantine hit, because I started like three months before that, was running through all my approvals, then all of a sudden everything is kind of paused, then I had to go get all my approvals again because they expire after a year. The Rona screwed me over harder than you could imagine. Babe, I need the suitcase brought in here real quick. It's right there in the living room. Also, seven months? Uh, she don't look like she's exactly lost seven months worth of weight at this point. She's still kind of got the whole grimace thing going on with that purple. But damn, lady. Really? Did she just, oh, did she just let the quarantine F up everything for her? And that book bag, our carry-on. It's been a really hard time. I really don't oh, even know exactly how long it's been since I got approved for surgery. But it's been a while, and it's just been really hard. This stuff goes in the book bag, and I'll put this stuff in the suitcase. She's out of breath, holding out toothpaste and a toothbrush. I don't think this is going to go well. She's about to get to Houston and just be like, What the hell happened? You didn't lose the 30 pounds a month like I told you to. Around a month and a half or two months after I saw Dr. Now, I was ready to move to Houston. But then with everything having to shut down, I just had to be here and wait. And it's just been a while to keep doing the diet and everything on top of it being an emotional. Also, can we talk about being 600 pounds and having to wear a mask in 90 degree heat outside? Because that just about killed me to wear the damn mask. Forget the damn Rona or whatever's going on with that. You guys were going to ruin me with a mask. I almost lost my damn life a couple times because of those things. Time, and it's just been a struggle, but I haven't stopped trying. I've been able to talk to Dr. Paradise when it's gotten really bad, and I've had my own therapist to talk to, too. But this just hasn't been easy. And right now, I don't know where my weight's at. But I'm going to find out soon. Man, no. Man, I really think it's a hell of a lot higher than we realize. Mom. Right now, we're preparing to go back to Dr. Now. And I'm nervous. I'm nervous about finding out where my progress is at. And about taking this trip and how it's going to go. I can't. If she's nervous, the writing's on the wall, guys. Because you know if you did good enough or you know if you've been screwing up this whole time. But the nerves, she probably had a couple of nervous nachos or something like that. This is not looking good for our girl here. Can't do the drive again. It's too hard. And so we're going to fly. But I haven't been on a plane in like maybe 20 years. Don't worry. I haven't been on a plane since I went to Disney World when I was like 10. I, I would rather drive 20 hours than get in a plane at this point. About the plane ride, you're going to be fine. Oh, easier said than done. 
So I have no idea if I'm going to be able to handle it at my size. And that's what has me scared. But Yeah, once you go up there in the air and stuff, it gets kind of dangerous, right? I feel like a lot of like super overweight people, like flying is dangerous. I'd almost lost 100 pounds and was making some progress. But after being indoors for like seven months, I struggled to keep doing everything. Oh, yeah, that don't look like we got under 500 or anything. Oh, shit, this is going to be awful, isn't it? Damn, why are you even flying down there at this point? Just go weigh in at the local place so you know what's going on. I need it at times. I'm not sure if I'm still around my last weight or if I gained some. Nope. But what has me worried is I don't feel like I have that bit of extra energy I had when I first lost the weight. You need to get you a Red Bull or something, lady. Get a little more pep in your step so we can get the doctor now. Also, that airport is so empty, man. Didn't flights drop really low during, like, quarantine and stuff like that, too? So people started traveling everywhere? Um, Hello. Just need an ID. Here's your boarding passes. You'll be able to get B29. So right around this corner and then down through security. Yep. It's been 20 years since I've been on a plane. I just know the seats are usually small and cramped. Yeah, we might have to left cheek, right cheek this situation somehow. Put the armrest right down your crack. Uh, yeah, I don't know how she's going to pull this off. Does that armrest flip up? Because if not, that's going to be in a very dangerous spot. Electric card to D2, please. Electric card to Delta 2, please. So my worry is that it's going to be too much for me at some point. Y'all sure I'm not going to flip this thing? And what it's going to be like to be on a plane at my side. She got a chubby chauffeur. Really? I missed out on this too? You may mean to tell me that I got fat enough to do go-karts in an air like airport and I never went and took advantage of that? What is wrong with me? Guys. Everybody is staring. I'm like a freak show. Screw them. Let them stare. People will judge you at every turn, every which way. The only way to avoid criticism, do nothing, say nothing, do or be nothing. And you're trying your best to turn your life around for Josh, your family, all that. So let people stare. It doesn't really friggin' matter. Also, that thing is definitely getting a little bit of lift there in the front. I don't like this. Part of having a big mom, buddy. I'm sorry. I never wanted you to be embarrassed like this. Just put your mask over your face. This old man's going crazy on the hefty horn, like, out of the way. We got a thousand pounds in this thing. Momentum's a bitch, man. Get the moving. You should pay me for this music. I'm making for my mind, from the memory. That thing definitely just went a hell of a lot slower uphill. That's hilarious. That was so humiliating. Yeah. But I'm pushing past all my concern and fear. Good. Because I really want to get back to Dr. Now. Hello. Thank you. Discomfort causes growth. It's a good thing to be uncomfortable half of the time. Also, that little, like, uh, gray bag her son's holding, that's her CPAP machine she's bringing with her. I have one of those, too. Get weight loss surgery soon. I'm just worried about getting on the plane and if it's going to be too tight of a fit for me. That's what I'm really scared about because I don't fit in small places at all. I feel like that's something every 600 pounder has said at some point. Tight places don't really work out well for any of us. That's not just a you special thing, lady. Oh, shit. That armrest definitely looks fixed to me, so that thing's about to go to Never Never Land. I'm winded 
but I'm holding up okay. This isn't as bad as I thought it could be. Oh, never mind. It folds up. She doesn't have to, like, crotch a friggin' armrest or anything. It's tight, but I think I can manage. That's what you It's said. like a three or four hour flight. So I'm just going to try and take it easy and rest until I get there. She does have two seats, though, so she does get the left cheek, right cheek, one seat each, which I feel like is definitely ideal for our weight class. I'm getting really nervous about getting on the scale. Part of me really wants to know where I'm at, and part of me doesn't. Uh, I think we're in trouble. Just judging off of her nerves, we're definitely in some damn trouble here. This this is uh, turbulent waters for 600 pounders. Because I'm scared of what it's going to mean if I gained anything. I worked so hard to get a... See my system? Judging her width here in the corner, she has definitely gained probably about 50 pounds because them elbows are much further out with the picture frames than I saw last time for surgery and I just don't want to lose it but I know if the number that comes up on the scale is higher than it was then it's probably not going to be good oh the suspense I hate when they do this but it's been hard so I don't know what kind of number is going to come up She's definitely not going to like the number she sees, but she could still work on it, fix it. There's still hope for her. Uh oh, Raggy. We don't need the mystery van to tell us what, uh, or the mystery machine to tell us what this friggin' mystery was. She definitely didn't follow that damn diet. That's disappointing. It's what I was afraid of. I did struggle with the diet some, but I didn't stop trying the whole time. I know it's been a hard time, so that's understandable. But it looks like you gained more than half the weight you lost back. So it looks like you went back to coping with food again. And when I talk... I like that. I was trying the whole time. I gained over 50 pounds, but I was trying, which I feel like A for effort, okay? Well, maybe not. Uh, Z for zebra cakes for effort, but you definitely were eating a hell of a lot more than you're letting on. Talk to you. I warned you that no matter how hard it gets, you need to stay on track, or we will move ahead with your weight loss surgery. I know it's just been a whole lot longer for me to try and do this on my own. I understand that, but you're still gaining, so that's the issue. So I'm still able to get weight loss surgery. Is that a real life question? Like, is she serious? Does she really think that he's just gonna, A for effort, lady, you did it once. You could do it again, but you're definitely gonna have to prove something to Doc because I, I don't see him moving forward with anything right now. Not while you're gaining. I told you that, but this is what we can do. You have shown me you can do this once, so I'm confident you can do it again. So make plans to move to Houston and come down here. And if you do that, we'll check your weight then. And if you... See, that's what I was saying. You did it once, you can do it again. You lost the weight, you gained again. I want to put you for weight loss surgery again. Okay? Okay. Thank you, doctor, now. So you think you can move down here? Yes, we had a place here for me. And we'll see if I can get an apartment there again and move down. So my husband is staying home to pay the bills back there to keep our home in Ohio. And me and my son are moving down to Houston and my mom is paying for us to live down here. And she will be here with me while I have the surgery and my recovery after for a couple weeks. Did I look that bad with the mask on when I was that fat too? Cause that mask is covering like a third of her face. Also people with glasses, I feel really bad for you guys cause those masks had to just be hell. Because I fogged up if I tried to wear, like, sunglasses or whatever with the damn mask on. Okay. 
But if you take a lot longer to do that, then that's not gonna work. So make sure you do that uh, within the next few months, you understand? Yes, and I'll, I'll move down here as soon as I can. Okay, before you go back tomorrow, I want to run some tests on you to make sure there are no new issues with you that we need to address. So we That's the part they never show on this show that I really wish they showed more of. So many authorizations, doctor visits, things you have to, like, make sure are okay before they'll allow you to get the surgery. Like, it's a friggin' lot, man. We'll set that up for you and let you know where to go for that. And then after that, I'll see you when you move down here, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so uh, I hope to see you all again soon. Let me know. That guy looks so funny with a mask on because, like, it's just beard and eyes. He looks real funny with it. Okay, 24 pounds down. I found a place in Houston that's in the same complex I was going to move to before. And I'll be able to move into it next month. So I'm getting prepared for that and working hard to lose as much as I can by then. Yeah, because if you just move without any kind of weight loss and try to kind of bully doctor now into allowing you to have surgery, that's not going to work out in your favor, lady. So you're going to have to get a move on, stop staring out the window, contemplating life a little bit. Like, But she could do it. She could absolutely do it. I hope she does, honestly, for that little boy's sake. I went to the local clinic to get my current weight, and I've lost 24 pounds, so I have to lose 38 more to hit Dr. Now's goal. And I'm working hard to do that in a month with the timeline that he gave me. So we're not gunning for the two months, 80 pounds anymore. We're just going for, like, what we lost last time, right? Because 38, 24, 62... So uh, she's going bare minimum effort on this one. But it's not easy getting back on the diet and being strict with it again, especially with all the stress of trying to move and leaving my family. Just the thought of being apart from them for any chunk. What the hell was that shirt for? That thing was a thong, right? That's a 600 pound thong. There ain't no way she could fit in that shirt. I don't think, does that thing stretch like crazy? of time is upsetting but this is the only way even if it means we have to be apart for a while doctor now told me that if i work hard i could get to my goal in the next year and i'm going to give it my all to do that so i'm working to manage my portions again and i'm back to exercising every day well i mean the whole texas toast diet you were on is probably what caused you to slide back for those last seven months. So I imagine going back to eating all the unfun ways you have to when you're on a keto diet, probably not the easiest thing, but you got this. Come on, lady. So Josh and I have been going places like parks or trails to spend time together while I get my exercise in. I'm trying to... This lady does have the creepiest dolls I've ever seen all throughout her damn house. I don't know how I'm going to do this without you. If you can do it, you're going to be fine. You can call me up. Actually, I'm not really sure how she's going to do it either. It seems like he does a lot of the parenting, even though he works. And Considering that she was sleeping 15, 16 hours, depressed or not, she had a kid she has to care for. Every day. And I'll come visit you every chance I get. But by doing this... It's going to allow me to have a future with them that I wasn't going to have. And that's my biggest motivation to do this. Because I know if I succeed, then everything I ever wanted to do as a mom and a wife will be possible. That's the right way to look at it. Everything you want's right within your like reach. You just have to reach out and take it. And by doing it, I mean, you just have to take a little less food to your mouth in order to do that. But... She could do it. The only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. Come on, Crystal. We're at the end of the damn episode, so I'm not going to get to see you do it, but I think you could do it. I'll never get to that life, to those possibilities, if I keep justifying what I've been doing.
Hey, back in black, the fat hack. I like that. So I'm more determined than ever. More determined than when I started this. And I feel like I'm more motivated than ever because I've seen a little bit of what I'm capable of and gotten a small taste of how life can get better for me. And Everyone is capable of more than they realize. You are holding yourself back more than you realize because if you just tried more or gave yourself a chance, I feel like so many people would excel so much further than they realize and just have such a like, bright future and they just kind of hold themselves back and dim their own light, if that makes sense. All of us, if I keep making progress, so I'm not slowing down or getting off track again. I'm staying focused on what's ahead and all the possibilities that will be there for me if I stay the course. So like a guiding light, I'm envisioning the life I want with my family. And for my... She's, like, oddly enough, everything she's been through, she seems like she's had her head on right most of the episode, except for those seven months. Self, if I succeed. To make sure I get there, no matter what it takes. And I can't wait for that. All right. Well, I guess that's the end of Crystal. Man, what a rocky ride that was. She started out great. Well, no, she didn't. Her childhood started out terrible, tragic. Just some of the most disgusting stuff I think I've ever heard on the show. So I feel for her. I understand why she got this big. She was an emotional eater. And just so much of her past was haunting her in the future. So I wish her the absolute best. I wish Josh the best and Freeland. But it's just, it's tragic to see what you could do to some kid that will haunt them in the future and cause like so such just a warped reality of what an adult should be and they just feel like everyone in the world's gonna hurt them so they kind of put up these walls and they do that with like a gingerbread house or something on my 600 pound life but crystal had a rough go she started out great she fell off the wagon kind of hit the ditch rolled a couple times into a couple ding dongs or whatever but uh hopefully back on track at the end she could pick it up, get it all back together. I wish her the best in life. And uh, maybe I'll look and see if I can see anything about where she is now. But uh, yeah, that's it for Crystal. So leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about her. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I'll see y'all. Peace.